Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast that explores Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jane Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. And because everybody has been asking, mm. this is what, the one time, All right. the one time we one bring, time what? you know, Krista McDunn on. Yeah. So, so they basically want us to leave. Uh, I think what they really noticed was how weak you are without somebody else. First of all, they couldn't have noticed that because she was there, so there was somebody else. So that just makes sense. So you're canceled. Secondly, how is it canceled? I'm because not canceled. I wasn't by myself. So you don't no, know. No, but you wanted to about. be by yourself, and everyone was so thankful. No, I'm that Batman. You you're the Riddler. The fact and you're that, done. The fact That's that what it is. she was there, she outshined. Of you. course, she did. Outshine. She's you. going to outshine us both. That well, doesn't matter. I don't know about us both. Okay, yeah. Because here's the difference. Here, I'm a son. You're a black hole. That's the difference. Difference between you and why are you making this because a you white are a son why, that is why collapsed are you in a on minority itself. thing black hole just because sun. I'm and now I'm not talking about you. skin color I'm just saying because sun shining bright did you really like say diamond. black hole sun yeah I did and that's pretty good and there, see how that was a that? nice reference mm-hmm. that's pretty good I appreciate that I appreciate that yeah yeah I got it okay so we had Chris McDonough on a while back she is a how do you licensed professional counselor okay <laughs> Quote license. Okay, I don't know what that <laughs> means. I feel, I feel like online. I need to do some therapy right now. I here. haven't seen any license. Uh, <laughs> have you, Jimmy? Have you seen any license? I have not seen. I one. haven't seen in, a license. It's in my oh, office. Andrew Huss okay. decline. Oh, Andrew Huss is. Uh, he was just trying you? to Facetime me. Oh, he's not sleeping because it's like what is it six forty? He's a farmer. I figured he'd be sleeping uh, by yeah, now. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we have. Chris McDunn back because you guys have asked for it. Mm-hmm. So many of you have said that was awesome. We Everybody want more Chris McDunn. People have said less we, Joe. She should have her oh, less Joe Fo. They, nah, they, I think they said no, less Joe. No, because you weren't there because you were too busy. Be, so like, less Joe. being in Vegas or whatever you do. I don't think I was in Vegas that day. Was whatever it? you no no, no. you were faking you were sick at dinner. I was at dinner. Oh, thank you. you. I was at dinner. Yeah, you were okay. at dinner. He had, he had, we were starving. You were at dinner. I was at, at dinner <laughs> appointment. Hmm. I, I was oh. having dinner with my father. Okay, pinkies out, bow ties up. Mm. Yep. Okay, I can I imagine made it. him a seafood paella. Oh, that's like the worst. Mm-mm. Seafood paella. Yeah. It's fantastic. Well, what is that? Like pretend fancy Spanish food? What is? That? I don't know what that is. You, do you know what a paella no. dish is? Yeah, I know. It's, okay. Okay. And it was this, Spanish. Okay. Oh, uh-huh. And then and well yeah, okay. Okay. But this one also had then shrimp. So pretend fancy. No. Got it. Got it's a, it. It's okay. Con- I don't know. I'm tell just trying him, to understand. Tell him about the different varieties based upon the region and cities. Tell him. Well, I'm not a foodie <laughs> like you. I don't know all, all that stuff. All right, Krista. But, okay. I, listen, but as, it's a, Spanish. as a licensed counselor, you're supposed to have your my back. white privilege I, is no, not going to get got, you out of this, Krista. I've got your back. I just <laughs> I can you. empathize with your position Do not. on oh, paella. Oh, oh my gosh! I just want you to know something. You cannot she, empathize. No, no, no. I want you to understand something. I understand she it. She just did a better transition Best to the topic of all time. Yep. than you've ever done. Or you. Or no, you're you. Or you. I'm the new podcast husband. Yep. <laughs> oh, we are both the wives. This is a <laughs> this is an Old Testament polygamous <laughs> podcast. <laughs> there are two podcast wives and one pad- podcast husband. Okay. We are so messed up. Oh. Okay. We're gonna get canceled hard. Yeah, totally sorry. No, so, don't okay, apologize. So, that was I, fantastic. <laughs> No, this was the greatest. So here's the thing. So <laughs> I gotta if, text your husband. <laughs> if you if you know if you've been to our conferences, you guys know Krista. She is the tiny, <laughs> she's the tiny lady that stands up front <laughs> and and directs everything. She makes the the, the conferences awesome, and uh, she's also of course a member at Redeemer, and she is a licensed professional counselor, yes. clinical or professional. How do you say that? Licensed professional counselor. Oh, okay. Next one is licensed clinical professional Would counselor. Would you have to get a master's for that? Is that what No, is? I have a master's. I just have oh. to take another test. Sorry. <laughs> no, I've Didn't got it. Didn't mean to offend you. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> Everybody, just so you know, she has a master's I degree. I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, do you have a master's degree? <laughs> no, I don't have a master's degree. No, you have a bachelor's from a, a Christian community college called Judson. That's, That's where I got my master's. Oh, so you're, you're master's. <laughs> okay, so you both have... you ba- ba- both Judson basically. alums, baby. There we go. Well, some of us went to the Southern Baptist Theological oh, Seminary, so, okay. which is basically uh, like the Yale nice. and the Harvard of Southern Baptists. Must be nice to be white. Yeah. Well, you know, they did own slaves back in the day. So mm. um, Wow. Okay. Sorry what about happened that? to my empathy transition? Okay, we're well, talking no, about? Your no, your transition was fantastic. <laughs> Best transition <laughs> ever. Best that that, that was way better than Bruce Jenner's. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> Why would you do that? I'm sorry. You're going to get us in so much trouble talking about transitions. <laughs> Seriously, bro. You just embarrassed her. No, I'm not embarrassed. She's a professional. We are not professionals. So I text Kevin. Okay. Your husband. Yeah. I go, your wife just called herself the podcast <laughs> husband, which leaves Joe and I as the dot, dot, dot. And he goes, I'm concerned about what that makes me. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Incidental. That's what it makes you, Kevin. I'm just saying. All, All right, right, go ahead. The reason we have, oh the, reason we have uh, mm-hmm. the amazing Krista on is because... Oh, you guys know if if you know her at all. You heard her last time. She's she's a she's a Christian. She's a theologian. She's a counselor, and we wanted to talk to her about this whole idea of empathy mm-hmm. because it's been uh, a pretty public debate or harangue lately, and it really started with uh, a Desiring God post. Ooh, yeah. you're talking about mm-hmm. Joe Rigney's? Yeah, that that is that is the That's one. That's the one. The infamous yeah. a piece of advice, if I may. You may. Okay. Um, hey, guy. If you if if you want to um, sort of imitate C.S. Lewis, or if you want to like kind of like jump into the fray of a classic writer, maybe maybe don't. You know, you know, <laughs> maybe, you, maybe, don't. maybe just maybe don't do don't. that because you're you're not C.S. Lewis. You're not. I know. So he wrote this post back in 2019, and he picked up on C.S. Lewis's yeah. uh, Screw Tape Look, mm-hmm. Screw Tape, yeah. Yeah, 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 which is a great book. Really good. In fact, I read it for the first time before I had gone to Bible college. Mm. I had no idea what I was reading. It was so weird, and it was tripping me out. When I finally understood it, I thought. I realized how brilliant it is. Like it really was something. So it was a total shock to me. And so uh, 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 Joe Rigney, Joe, you have the same name, bro. So and you're bald like me, but um, maybe change your name. Um, so he wrote this post, uh, and it was it was in that vein, right? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Uh, dear Wormwood, Wormwood, or really Wormwood, and he kind of goes on. And the whole uh, point of this is to talk about the danger or the enticing sin of empathy. Right, and so since then, uh, people have been jumping on this. People that we know, people mm-hmm, that we have mm-hmm. been friends with, who no longer seem to want to be friends with us, and then other people have jumped onto this to say, with without qualification, really, empathy is, is a sin. Is sin right? So uh, Doug Wilson, James White, mm-hmm, like these mm-hmm. guys, these are guys that have uh, have gotten into this. So we wanted, we really wanted to talk about empathy, and we thought, you know what? Instead of Jimmy and I talking about it. By ourselves. Let's bring on someone that knows what they're talking Who about. Who actually like understands empathy. Yeah. Maybe that, that might be good. Yeah. That'd be great. So Krista, we're going to chill out here for a little bit. We're going to smoke a couple <laughs> cigars. You just go ahead. You've well, got 30 I, minutes. Well, okay. So here's the thing. So for, for Steve McCoy that's listening. <laughs> yes. Right? Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. He doesn't know anything. <laughs> he doesn't know anything. <laughs> no. And so I think it'd be helpful for Steve. How would, how would one define empathy? Or how do you hear it? You know, uh, maybe we could ask that in two questions. Let's go with like what's, you know, the correct... Should we say that? Yeah. What's a correct definition? What of is it? a common understanding? What's of a sympathy? common yeah. understanding empathy. of empathy. sympathy, empathy, all of that? What yeah. Are, what are we talking about here? So, as I was reading a lot of the materials that this, you know, people, I went to the dictionary, like they went to the dictionary, yeah. and things like that. So, there, anybody can go do that, right? But in terms of practical, like boots on the ground, the way counselors would look at it, mm-hmm. sympathy and empathy are very closely related, but they are different. So, sympathy, I think, implies. Almost a sense of pity, and I think one of the dictionary definitions I saw included that. Um, whereas empathy implies it's a, it's an understanding mm. of the feelings, not just yeah. you know. Th- so think about it. Like let's say, I don't know. Let's say you knew someone. This is horrible, but let's say you knew someone who lost their house in a tornado. Mm-hmm. Sympathy would say, "I'm really sorry you lost your house in the tornado." Mm-hmm. Now that's not wrong. Right. You can feel really sorry for that you know empathy would say they might say i am so sorry you lost your house that must have been terrifying Mm. you know so you're actually naming Mm. like how that must have felt or i can imagine you know you you didn't know what to do Mm -hmm. i mean tell me about it you're it's like you are saying like you're wanting to enter not enter it with them in terms of feeling it Mm -hmm. but hearing about their experience like, mm. that you're truly interested there's, there's like an invitation for more yes exactly right? it's, oh it's that rather, is the perfect way to describe like, it yeah rather just the surface uh, level not perfect but go ahead jimmy well, rather uh, than almost good. you know I, I don't I, surface level sounds really negative here mm-hmm. but more than just like 
the, go, you're moving past the first response into something more. Yeah, it's deeper, yeah. right? It's deeper. And so, yeah, you know, so again, like That's I remember... That's what Judson taught me. <laughs> how to ask those kind of questions and frame those things. Yeah. It's like, Judson teaches you how to ask questions. Southern teaches you the answers, okay? So well, ahead. you didn't know the answer here. No, I, I, I didn't. Just, no. <laughs> but go ahead, sorry. Well, and I, I remember being in school, empathy is kind of one of the first things we talked about. That Really? You know, yeah, yeah, that you... The first thing with counseling, the, these are the big jargon words, but you want to establish with someone a therapeutic alliance, okay. which mainly just means a relationship, right? Yeah, right? So when I have a new client, they're a complete stranger to me, typically. Um, I, I've never met them before. Mm-hmm. Um, I know literally nothing about them. And so I have to develop a relationship and make a connection yeah. relatively quickly, not in that one session. But over the course of a few sessions, if this is going to work. Yeah. And sometimes it doesn't, you know, to be honest. you but don't you still get the bill with... for the three. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy. Yes. Some people take longer to establish a therapeutic association. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Or yes. alliance. Alliance. Relationship. Yep. Whatever. Any of those words. But anyway, no, it doesn't always work out. Like yeah. you don't always click with everyone. Yeah, but yeah. yet, yeah, you're trying to establish that, right? Mm -hmm. So the way you do that is through empathy, you know, through listening, but then also, you know, using things like to say like, oh, I can imagine or that must have felt like, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. the one thing that you would never say with empathy is, oh, I know exactly how you feel. Mm. Right. Don't ever say that. Period. It's kind of like wondering if a woman's pregnant and asking her, don't do it. If you, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes. If, you know, sometimes I see a woman. If you're risky, oh you know, sometimes I see a woman, and, and oh my gosh. she's got her belly is super round like a basketball. Mm. I feel like I, at that point I could probably ask, right? If it's round, so oftentimes <laughs> don't I, recommend I, I, it. I, so I often feel, and this is, I don't know if I'm jumping ahead, and we'll keep going, but like I often feel weird saying something like I can imagine, because then I feel like I'm focusing on me mm. in that. So often in those situations, I'll I'll say things like, "I can't even imagine." Can you help me? Like, right? Like, is there anything? You know what I mean? Like, I'll say things like, "I can't even imagine." I've never experienced that, right? But I I still my heart breaks for I I, I know how you, like that I know how, but I'll say things like, "My heart breaks because I could see mm-hmm. what this is doing to you." Right? Yes, but that's that's empathetic, like because you're recognizing the feelings, you're mm. recognizing the emotional impact, right, and acknowledging them. So, yeah, that that is mainly what empathy is. And we need that to develop relationships. And yeah. so when I was reading all of this stuff, um, regardless of who wrote it, including, you know, the Desire and God James article. White, mm-hmm. and Doug Wilson, yep. Desire and God. So I read all of those. And the, the thing that stood out to me was, you know, they, they seem to still want to have this one up kind of relationship with mm. people like that they were the authority figure oh, I see what you're saying. or the truth teller, you know, however you want to describe it. And that the person was going to be the, the learner, you know, the one that they were going to impart knowledge to mm-hmm. or set straight or whatever you want to call it. There's a place for that. I think sometimes like I can imagine in church discipline, you know, I, I could see where there's a place for that. that Not allowing someone to kind of use those feelings as a barrier to real change. Correct. Exactly. And there's a place therapeutically for that too. Right. Right. You know, so while I seek to establish that therapeutic alliance, what that does for me as a therapist, and I think what it would do for us as friends and other relationships, is it gives us the right. We've earned the right to speak into these issues. Mm. If we don't know someone mm-hmm. or... We haven't even sought to understand their point of view. Why would they listen to us? Yeah, right. They, have, you yeah. know, we could speak truth at them and spew it all day long, but they're like, "Who cares? I, who are you?" So, like, you the, know, they so don't. So, like, the irony of as you're, if, if what you're saying was correct, like these individuals are looking to keep this hierarchy of authority. It seemed like they that. haven't really. They lose that authority rather than gaining that 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 level of authority to be able to speak into that situation. Right. Well, they're, yeah, they're undermining that yeah. authority in yeah. a way, right? Because they're actually throwing up barriers instead of trying to tear them down, yeah. right? Yeah. There was a there was a there, at some point in this, I there was a situation where they were trying to explain like you don't feel with people 
who feel bad that they tried that they tried to rob a bank and they got caught and now they're in jail. You shouldn't feel with them. And I would say, yeah, I do. Because mm-hmm. I know what it's like to be caught in the crosshairs of the law or the law of God. And it's it, it doesn't excuse it. It just understands uh, on, on some basic level. Like, no, I feel with you. I understand on some level. The guilt. What, yeah, the, the guilt, right. the feeling. The, here's the definition. One of the common definition of, the definitions of empathy, and this is the problem. Mm-hmm. This is the big problem. Is guys that you know love Jesus, love the Lord, love the Bible. Um, they're defining empathy in a very specific way so that they can say empathy is sin. That's mm. part of the problem, right? I completely agree with you because when I read Doug Wilson's blog, I didn't listen to their dialogue, but when I read it, he basically acknowledged like I created my own definition. <laughs> okay, so this is a problem, right? <laughs> and I this... was like, well, then we can make anything mean anything, and we exactly. Can... I mean, w- words matter. Yeah, and, and their and definitions the, and the common matter. understanding of these words that are used in the greater populace or yeah, in specific yeah. right. professional fields right. actually carry some weight. Um, here's a definition of empathy that is pretty common: the action of understanding, being aware of, being sensitive to, and vicariously experiencing the feelings, thoughts, and experiences of another, um, of either the past or the present, without having the thoughts and experience fully communicated in an objectively explicit manner. In other words, I feel with you for where you are at doesn't excuse where you are at. It doesn't condone where you exactly. are at. But I understand. It's understanding is the is the real part here, right? Exactly. Exactly. It, it, and you might even feel along with them. Like, I don't know. Em- like empathy would be like if you've ever watched a movie – and you cried with at the movie. I don't mm. cry. But I go know ahead. you don't. Jimmy might. Yeah, uh, Jimmy understands. First of all, we mm-hmm. watched Armageddon. And okay. First of all, that doesn't count. Don't you bring up Armageddon? <laughs> and that one time. No, it doesn't that count. One time. We, Listen, I was tired. It doesn't matter. That one was, night we were, we're okay, together to watching a okay. show. Krista, and please at go ahead. Midnight, it Continue. started to snow, and right at midnight it was snowing, and okay. you cried. Okay. Bruce Willis is, as you like to say, a national treasure. But go ahead. He's no Denzel, but that was a. Yeah, he's the white Denzel. Oh, what? He is the white Denzel. All right. He is not. He's the le- but means he's the lesser Denzel. No, but I'll, no, no, I'll no, no. But he, that. He, he, can we can we Alright, we'll continue. continue. Okay. He's no Denzel. <laughs> no, he's the white Denzel. He's, he's not, not the Denzel. He, There's not, only one Denzel. He's the white Denzel. He is not even that. No, I agree, because his movies have been terrible. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Continue. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, if you cry with a movie for whatever reason. Mm-hmm, Joey. <laughs> no. no, but seriously, if you whether it's reading a book, seeing a movie, that's empathy. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a fake situation. It's a movie. Yeah. But yet, you're like. Somehow you, you're drawn into You it. are. Yep. Yeah, you're drawn in. So that's kind of like what empathy is. However, like, I guess if I was going to agree with anything that these guys said, is that now, do we get sucked into that? Right. Do we get pulled into that's that? Right. Yeah. Do we get enmeshed with that? No, that would be bad. But that's not empathy. That's called dysfunction <laughs> you know that's good that's called bad boundaries that's called yeah enmeshment those are problematic what things was, um i think uh joel mcdernan uh talked about this that uh that empathy is one thing empathy is understanding mm-hmm. it's 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 walking line alongside somebody and, right. and feeling with them in in an appropriate way mm-hmm. through the lens of scripture, through the mm-hmm. lens of our, of our worldview. Yes. But there's a difference between like condoning and he uses, I mean, listen, I don't have this whole article, but, but, but there's a difference between a condoning and saying, okay, yes, you're justified in all that you're feeling yes. yeah. and everything is okay. There's a difference. What is the, is, is there a, is there a, a, a clear line of distinction between empathy that is good and empathy that is bad? Well, <laughs> or is it just that empathy is one thing, and then once it becomes something bad, it's not empathy anymore? Yeah, I I guess I sort of sort of lean toward that last thing that you just said that it be, kind of morphs into something else. So I can think of examples of people that I've seen that had really what I thought were very strongly held beliefs, mm. values um, that are even in my profession that now I see going a completely different way hmm. that are, are buying into maybe what would be more common with the world, you know, and things like that, that has actually surprised me. 
And but I wouldn't call that empathy. There's a change that happened that you don't have to have hmm. to be empathetic. Like I consider myself to be an empathetic person, but yet I still have very strong feelings about mm-hmm. certain things. Sure. Strong opinions. Mm-hmm. I don't get to share that mm-hmm, with the mm-hmm. people I work with necessarily. Yeah. Um, they, you know, they don't care what I think, you know, they, they, but, but they are coming to me, not that it's going to be easier, not that they even totally want to, but they're probably coming because they want to change at some level. So I am going to speak truth in their lives. I'm going to challenge some of their thinking sometimes. Yeah. yeah. It's going to get uncomfortable. But I can be empathetic in the process. I can be kind in the process. Um, I need to let them kind of come to those conclusions because that's when it, just hitting someone over the head with something isn't long lasting. Mm. But when they have kind of that light bulb moment where they discover it, I can help them discover it. That's going to be long lasting. But anyway, so I, I have seen people kind of shift empathy in a sense but it's to me it becomes something else like they've literally changed even their own core beliefs and values um and you know just what i've seen personally which has been surprising to me that does not have to happen can happen but that's more on that individual person that's not Mm. the fault of empathy i don't think what's the distinction between sympathy and empathy what is the difference yeah, like I said earlier, I think there's an element sometimes of pity with sympathy. Right. Um, I remember when we first started talking about it in schools, I remember thinking like, we shouldn't have sympathy cards, we should have empathy cards. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I don't know about you guys, but whenever I go to like, you know, the card shop or whatever, and I'm looking for a sympathy card, so many of them, I'm like, this just stinks. Hmm. Like, it seems trite. It just, ugh. Well, like cards, I, ugh. if you're buying a card that was written by somebody else... Uh, it depends. Sometimes yeah. there's good cards. Really? But yeah. You know it takes a while. Let me tell you what I do. Uh, historically, mm-hmm. over my 49 years, uh, if I'm if I have 49, yeah. If, if I have to buy 140, if I have to buy a card for somebody, mm-hmm. I buy them a bat mitzvah card, not a bar mitzvah card. A bat. It's the girl coming of age. I will buy them something that makes no sense at all because if I'm not going to write it myself, then it doesn't really matter. It doesn't mean anything. That's just me. Go ahead, Krista. Actually, your son has adopted that. He gave Ian. Like did he really? A, some kind of, what did they, <laughs> oh, when Ian was homesick, he and Gideon dropped off a card and it was like, you're two today or something. <laughs> and it was I like, had no idea, but that's yeah, my boy. it was awesome. Ian loved it. And it was like, they dropped him off like some <laughs> treats because he wasn't feeling good Being and whatever. Baby. Those are but good yeah, friends. it said, you're two today. And he's like, this is hilarious. So that's actually <laughs> yeah, really that's, awesome. That's, that's, listen, I had no idea. That's my boy. He mm. did that. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that's cool. No, there you can find good cards out there. Really? Yeah. It, can but you it, really? You, it takes a long time. Why like, would I, I found do that? some nice cards. I don't know. Why would you I, spend so much time looking for a card when you can just write something yourself and be like, hey. Because I'm empathetic and lazy. Ooh, that's the, think, that's the combination. I think that's so. That's the magic combination for I'm buying Hallmark. I'm empathetic and a little bit lazy. <laughs> yeah. No, because no, Kevin always buys blank cards, and he writes such nice things, but I'm like, this is exhausting. I all can't Kevin imagine him writing my, this. All Kevin does is bust my chops. Like, what is? What, I haven't experienced uh, this empathetic side of Kevin. No, I get the nice Kevin. Do you really? <laughs> yeah. He must hate me. Yep. Chris's husband. Okay. All right. <laughs> he does not hate you. So we're... <laughs> We're, we're looking at, let, let, let's Don't talk about this. To him. So we're looking at that guys. Help him. We're looking at guys like um, like Dougie Wilson. Um, <laughs> Dougie. Uh, the, the, these guys, the, they're articulating specific concerns. Now, you you help me here because I'm not a counselor, um, but it seems to me that they are defining empathy in such a way that allows them to say it is sin, mm-hmm. but. Empathy, I think, understood as it is commonly understood, would allow us to say empathy is not necessarily a sin. It could morph into a sin like anything sure. in our lives. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So where are these guys right? When when you're looking at, you know, brothers like James White or whatever, they've got their Alpha Omega, you know, YouTube channel or whatever, mm-hmm. they're talking about these things. When they say empathy is a sin, this is something that I like to do. How are they right and how are they wrong? So where are these guys right? What So when I read some of this, what I was, like, if I was reading between the lines, I could be totally wrong. But what I was picking up was that they were pushing back against what we were seeing happen and what we are seeing happening in our culture. Mm-hmm. 
whether it's not that I want to open this can of worms, but no, like critical race theory. Oh, oh whoa! Oh, here okay. we Those go. That's her white things. privilege showing. Okay, go ahead, Krista. <laughs> so, I'm uncomfortable. The, sorry. <laughs> Get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable, right? <laughs> anyway, no, but things like that, or you know, maybe it was Black Lives Matter or whatever, or the transgender issue. We talked about that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and so I think what they're picking up on is that what used to be said to be like, oh, we just want people to be tolerant has morphed into, no, we want you to embrace it and validate it. Uh. And so I, and so I, that was what I was getting from some of what they were saying. And they decided to define the embracing and validating as empathy. Right. That's good. And That's so helpful. that was what I was picking up. So the, whether or not their ideas about these issues are right or not, that's a whole nother discussion. Mm -hmm. But I think that's what I felt like they were doing is that like we'd, because a lot of those movements are like, no, if you're not with us, you're against us. Yep. If you're not yep. validating us, then you're obviously racist or yeah. you're anti whatever we are. And, yeah. and that's not entirely fair either, right? right? That doesn't, no, I can disagree, but that doesn't mean I'm like anti everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I might disagree with one point or something like that. There's no room for nuance, right? And so I think they were pushing back on that a bit, but labeling it as empathy. Hmm. This, is, this, see, this is important to me, and this is why we wanted to have you on again. Um, because, not just because it makes um, our uh, downloads go up, uh, but it does. Um, it, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> but so like I can understand, because like I don't know um, Dougie Wilson, uh, but I know James White. We know mm -hmm. James White. We've hung out with James White. We like, I haven't. We, oh, really? You weren't there? No, I wasn't there. Oh, okay. Oh, it's just me and James. <laughs> kicking it you know being cool anyways mm -hmm. um it's like I, I know some of those guys and i think we would probably agree on so much um if we were to say like here are some basic problems in the world or in our culture mm -hmm. but when they start to say well this is what empathy is first of all who are you to say what empathy empathy is it's a it's a, actually a broader conversation we mm -hmm. have definitions from dictionaries from encyclopedias we have counselors there, there's a common understanding so I, I get that some of their concerns are our concerns. Mm -hmm. we, we share mm -hmm. those concerns. Sure. So I, I get that. And I want yeah, to affirm. Forcing the validation. Yeah, forcing yeah, the validation. Yeah. If that is what the, what's in the background of it, right? Right. You, but, don't want, you don't want to say like, oh, listen, how, what you are feeling is 100% justified and you should be, you know, upset yep. that you didn't, you weren't able to pull off the, the sin or the crime or whatever it is. But I think there's a difference between that and, and, and saying like, no, I know what it feels like to be condemned. Mm -hmm. I know what it feels like to feel guilty. And that doesn't mean that I'm crawling into the, into the what's the word they used? Um, it was always popular in the, the 70s and the 80s. Quicksand. The yeah, quicksand, that's what it, yeah. yeah. Quicksand disappeared after the 90s. But before the 90s, <laughs> every TV show and movie had quicksand in it yeah. because that was the danger. Mm. But anyways, um, yeah, you're jumping into the quicksand. Well, that, okay, I, I don't, I, I don't, that's not how I see it. I can understand what it feels because I remember what it feels like to be guilty and justly condemned and and in trouble and mm -hmm. and and there are there are worldly levels of that where like oh I don't want to suffer and I know what that feels like so I feel that with you I know mm -hmm. that that's scary but that doesn't mean that I agree with them it means that I understand them and that right. seems to be one of the predominant things that I see when I look at this idea of empathy is understanding how people feel right. and then feeling with them in that sense but not condoning everything that they're going through there's right. a difference right yeah like you know I was thinking about this too and you just reminded me of it I so I remember when this is going to sound so weird I remember when John Wayne Gacy was put to death mm -hmm. okay because you're old. I am. <laughs> Unfortunately. Wow. Super old. I am. She has blue hair. She's that old. <laughs> oh, I don't stop, have blue stop, hair. Stop, stop, you stop. dye it, but it's okay. No, Fine. I don't yeah. have blue hair. You have blue hair. I have dyed hair, but it's not blue. <laughs> it would be blue if you didn't dye it, old lady. Go ahead. <laughs> no. Anyway, so I remember when that happened, and I, Kevin, were, Kevin and I, that was fairly early in our marriage, I think, and I remember that night feeling really unsettled, and we were talking about it, and I said... This just feels yucky to me. Hmm. And I said, it's not that I don't understand why he needed to be put to death for his mm -hmm. crimes. Mm -hmm. I don't even, I mean, death penalty debates notwithstanding. It's not that I'm saying he doesn't deserve that. He did horrible things. Yeah, He's getting the justice that the system has decided was appropriate. But I, 
I could not like revel in that in any way right. at all. I imagined, and this was, but I did not go to school. I, you know, I had a psych degree, but that was it. I wasn't anywhere near being a counselor. But I remember thinking like, he's someone's son. He's someone's brother. And they're having to watch this. Like I thought of his family hmm. and how difficult it might have been for them. Right. And I just thought, this is not like a happy night. This is not. Like, woohoo, the Wicked Witch is dead, you know, like in the Wizard of Oz. It did not feel like that. And I remember thinking, like, I was almost surprised at how I felt about it. Even even God says that, right? That I do not delight in the death of the wicked. Right. There's there's something there that matters. And maybe that's something that that you could speak to. If, If empathy isn't condoning sin, if it isn't assuming the um the just the self justified feelings of an individual mm-hmm. but it's understanding the feelings of somebody who's going through difficulty whether that's self inflicted justified or unjustified if it's understanding that feeling why is empathy important why would it matter or maybe why is it bad or dangerous in your opinion to say empathy is sin because i'm guessing based on you know what you've said so far you would not think it, it it's a good idea to say empathy is a sin not as a blanket statement okay so so yeah. why why is empathy important well just even so we're recording this on a monday yesterday at church when dr quiggle spoke it occurred to me like he gave the gospel was so great mm-hmm. and one thing he said was jesus gets it which i want to talk about but one thing i realized was that we can, as Christians especially, we can be empathetic because we are no better. Right. Mm. That's good. You know, we are no better. And especially if, and I, I, I'm not saying that they did have this like one-up status, you know, that but that was their did. goal. Okay. It just felt Stop like that it. to me. <laughs> but, but we should not have that because mm. we mm-hmm. are just as like guilty. We are just as deserving yep. of yep. death. Yeah. There but the grace of God. Totally, right? The only difference is how we've acted it out. Right. So the so empathy focuses on our kind of our sameness in our neediness, right? Of a savior. Wow. Yeah. Right. But the problem is when what they're describing to me is when we make it about the behavior. The behavior is a symptom. Mm. The problem is total depravity, going back right. to what we talked about right. before, right? That's our, our shared problem. How that plays itself out looks a little bit different, but we got to be careful about thinking some sin is worse than others in mm-hmm. terms of positionally with God right. and, and in terms of our spiritual, like the fact that, we're, that we were spiritually dead. We were all equally spiritually dead. None of right. us were more dead or yep. less dead. We were mm-hmm. all If just anybody dead. was, it was Jimmy, but, but, but he wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. But, but, but if anybody was, it, was not it me. would have been you. It no, it would have been you. <laughs> okay. But it's going to be me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, so uh, part, of, part of this that, that is, is helpful for me is that we're, empathy doesn't condone sin. A- empathy doesn't excuse evil. Empathy understands what a person is going through. And any good preacher of the gospel and any self-aware sinner, like you just said, knows you're me. Mm-hmm. Hey, we're the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, so maybe your sins were different. You know, um, I stole and cheated and hurt people in my, but maybe, but what you did was you, you lied and you deceived and you conned people and you weren't violent or whatever. Like we, we can all you know, parse it out in different ways. Mm-hmm. But to, to understand how somebody feels in their desperation, in their guilt, or even maybe just in the, the affliction of their circumstances because of what they did. So it's not conviction from the Holy Spirit, but we all know what it's like to suffer the consequences of your sin. Mm-hmm. I feel that with you. That's right. not wrong. It's right. not wrong to say like, oh no, I, I know what it's like to feel caught and got. Yep. And like, now I'm going to have to pay the piper. Right. And not just John Piper. <laughs> the Piper. The Piper. The Piper. John Piper's pretty bad, but The Piper. Yeah, you don't want you, you don't know, want to owe Piper. The Piper's Barnabas Piper. I was just gonna I mean, say Barnabas. Yeah, is Barnabas the Piper. is the, the Piper. <laughs> no, but it's like, like you understand. Like I, I get that. That's not that's not me condoning your sin. That's not me saying you don't need to go deeper or farther. It's yeah. just like, I get you. Yeah. 
That's empathy. Isn't that empathy yes. in your opinion? Yes. And what I would argue, and I'm throwing myself under the bus here, is that the opposite of empathy is sin. Hmm. And that was me before. Like we, when you and I talked, I talked about my own struggles with anxiety that became an eating disorder. When I was in treatment, I realized that, oh man, I was so screwed up. I had so much perfectionism. I grew up in a Christian home. I was a Pharisee. I was an absolute, you guys would not have liked me. <laughs> we barely like you now. I know, you tolerate <laughs> me now. But before, I was just like, I was nice, but I was not nice. You were judgy. I was totally judgy. I was totally judgy. I remember we were we were in a group. I'm not going to talk about the group, but I remember thinking in this group, this was before I really struggled, and I would say, hi, how you doing? And then I realized that most of the people in the group, if you ask them that question, you better sit down and be ready to hear about it because they were going to tell you. Mm. And I was like, that was kind of a rhetorical question. I didn't really <laughs> want to hear know. your life story right now. <laughs> like, I did, the, the appropriate response would have been, fine, how are you? Right. But they actually were like, you asked, so I'm telling you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and through the process of my own therapy and God breaking me, I realized how judgy I was, how pharisaical I was, and it was ugly. That was sin. Mm. And I considered myself a Christian. I, you know, I believe right. I was saved then, but I was a Pharisee, and I, it was ugly, and I am ashamed. I, I mean, I, I really am. I'm ashamed of how I was then. And that's the opposite of empathy, is yeah, what you're saying. Yeah, I think. I think so, because I, I couldn't understand you know, like, how could you be feeling that way? I don't yeah, understand that. Yeah. What is wrong with you? Like, you know, Sebastian Maniscalco, if you're familiar with his comedy. Yep. No, I Aren't you embarrassed? To, I only listen to funny comedians. Of you don't think he's funny? Okay, whatever. <laughs> I don't. Joey, why are you? Because I, I, I have an opportunity. Have you have you Scorpion. watched him though? Seriously? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've watched him and then okay. I've, I've changed the... All right, uh, fine. I, I've, I've moved on. Okay. No, he's I, funny. He's funny. He's good. Well, and I his would... bit on like... Answering the door. Oh my gosh, was that was the first thing I ever saw. It was funny when I, I told saw. it 20 years ago. Yeah. That was the first <laughs> yeah. one I ever saw of him. I'm like, yeah. Oh. It was, it was, I was, it was, yeah I, everybody knows it already. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I was telling the same joke 20 years ago. It's fine. <laughs> now he can get up and take credit for it. It's fine. I it's didn't my know joke. you 20 years ago. <laughs> no, but you should have. Maybe. 20 you wouldn't years have, ago? You might not have liked ago, me. What was I? How old are 20 years ago? How old was I, Jimmy? Well, you just said, so you were 129. We don't no, pretend. Anyway. We don't pretend for a moment to have all knowledge. We know that we don't. We we have to learn, right? We're, mm -hmm. we're learning. We're understanding. Yeah. My my problem here, and, I, and it sounds like our problem here, is that you know brothers in the Lord are responding to a problem that they perceive, but in a way that doesn't help a conversation. It, it, it's like. Yeah, okay, there are forms of empathy, or empathy can certainly lead, anything can lead to sin. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. There could be, and I, I'm fine saying there are there are forms of what you might think of as empathy as excusing, condoning, or sharing in somebody's sin, but that's not really how people think about it. Mm -hmm. And when you start to say empathy is sin, I, it's hard for me to think that that it doesn't in some way connotate that you shouldn't feel with people. You shouldn't feel for people. Mm. And it's right. like, I feel for people like you know jimmy i know i don't have a lot of feelings it's i have just, a couple well just i think anger. you have more a there than you have okay you but know. when we were saying goodbye to <laughs> we had a family that's moving on sunday yeah well, were you there second service yeah i was okay uh, got you a got little, choked got up. a little dusty yep you got did. a little dusty in there i didn't like that i don't remember seeing that i didn't like no, that very did. much no yeah. i saw you going get out kevin I was like, and i both out. noticed yeah no i noticed it was a little it was a little so it's like like but like we should feel with one another. That's appropriate, right? And I know that they're saying to mourn with those who mourn. You should only mourn with those who are mourning over righteousness. I don't buy that for mm -hmm. a minute. I think you mourn with those who mourn to the degree that you can. And so if they're mourning that their sins have got them in trouble, I can mourn that far with them. But that's, there's more to it than that. Mm. It well, goes I deeper would, than that. I would say Jesus did that. With people, he did it perfectly, though. Right? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. He did it perfectly. Wait a minute. What are you saying? 
We don't do it perfectly. Wait, what are you saying about Jesus and empathy? Go ahead and say that your he thing. was empathetic. <gasps> oh, you are so canceled. You are so canceled. Oh, Doug I'm, Wilson. I'm ruined. Doug Wilson is going to ask your husband to spank he's, you. He's going to write and a, for, for spousal it. discipline. Stop. He's going to write he's a going, blog uh, and make blog on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we'd love to hear your thoughts. You can follow us online on Instagram, and Twitter at Doc and Devo, or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head to the website drfosha.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast at the store, joefostore.com, mm-hmm. and grab some gear. Get some gear. We got the Fresh Pot every Monday and Thursday it's blog fresh. post. It's hot. And video content mm-hmm. over at the website. Chris is coming back every every, every Monday. What? What? No. No. We'll talk about okay. it. Why? No, I'm what? cheesy. Oh. <laughs> she doesn't even want to. I'm the new podcast we've also, husband. Come on. We, <laughs> we've got the... What are you doing, Jimmy? Do your <laughs> thing. Do your job. We got... What is it? We got that all Do your thing. access exclusive mm-hmm. content. Banter That's right. Truth on Tuesdays, weekday wisdom, Monday through Friday. Devotions. Head on over to drfosha.com. Yeah. That's what we're talking all about. All access yeah. to sign Empathy. up today. Yeah. Later. Doug Wilson. Mm-hmm.